You are an academic and researcher, so part of your thesis and, and your work and a lot of the papers is the vision of the centralized monetary system as envisioned by in the theory of Austrian economist Friedrich Hayek. And uh, you've been actually working on this, how fiat currencies can coexist with all these systems and the measure CBIs. So tell us a bit about your academic and research vision, how you see still cryptocurrencies, digital assets, um, of course, the blockchain technology underlying and CBDIs. Because at the moment we are in a confluence of a, a bit of a, I would say, cyberpunk uh, perspective are we looking from a research from a perspective but as well all of this is coexisting but in the end of the day the forex fiat markets are four trillion transactions per day and all the crypto together is less than one trillion as we speak um so a bit uh how you see all these things working together yeah i mean uh, um i mean uh, i i think we are in a in a in a very uh difficult uh, uh transition phase of our uh of our social economic systems uh i would say even social economic political systems but i don't want to touch the political side but uh, i mean uh, there is a there, there is a, a you know an exponential grow we observe uh, we witness an exponential grow of these technologies uh, uh not just uh, blockchain but ai big data we are producing uh, in the 2022. We produce more data than uh, consume and produce more data than uh, what we have done in the previous 10 years. By 2025, we are going to double the amount of data we are going to produce this year. So we need technologies to handle this all this data. We have experienced, you know, decentralized platform uh, controlled by tech giants. Uh, we have seen uh, and witnessed how uh, badly they are uh, as a gatekeepers of our data. Uh, we have now a new technology blockchain that can enable us uh, to build a web three platform uh, that bring back the data control to the to the end users. That's fine. That's a good. Uh, that's a good. Uh, you know, um, that's a good vision. I would say, but uh, it's very difficult, very complex to navigate uh, in this space because uh, we also observe a kind of a blurring uh, of these technologies together. So um, we, for example. Uh, are uh, now the T Science Foundation working on uh, uh, decentralized AI systems, uh, and uh, so the blurring between a blockchain and AI, and uh, and the, uh, what I've seen now is basically uh, that in terms of uh, of uh, you know uh, uh, blurring these technologies is is basically creating kind of a uh, you know a level of technocracy where only the few that master these uh, technologies can uh, you know uh, empower uh, you know uh, the uh, you know uh, the 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 citizens uh, with the uh, you know with the um, with the uh, with the uh, with the instruments uh, they need uh, uh, for their social economic business so it's important that uh, this technology is uh, well mastered, but also well governed, and uh, and uh, and I go back somehow to the political vision of the society you want. So you mentioned uh, what is happening in the crypto space. Yes, uh, so going level lower to the crypto, we have we see a kind of a huge competition in the crypto. Uh, you mentioned Hayek. Hayek uh, was. Uh, uh, it's a Nobel laureate. Uh, he was um, he wrote a book in twenty in nineteen seventy six uh, on denationalization of money. So he was considering money as any other commodity. He was trying to promote uh, you know uh, the private uh, um, creation and and uh, and users of money beyond the uh, monopoly control of the governments. Uh, it was not the first one. Also, uh, uh, Milton Friedman in a, in the in the uh, in the eighties of the last centuries was uh, uh, basically promoting the uh, you know it was it was welcoming uh, the creation of a you know a, 
an automatic platform to control the monetary policy rather than uh, giving this con under the control of the of the of the governments so what is happening there in the crypto space is a kind of a competition between privates within privates and between privates and public so the central banks are somehow uh, have somehow been challenged so far by uh, by by these new technologies. Uh, the central banks uh, have been forced to enter the crypto space through the CBDC, uh, the central bank digital currencies, and the. Uh, and this is not something that is easy for a central bank to do, especially because the central banks are very, uh, you know, uh, traditional uh, and very uh, big institutions uh, that are not uh, easy to, to, you know, to uh, to adjust and accommodate to the to to market shift uh, like any other private company or any other startups. So when I was uh, at the central bank uh, ten years ago, uh, and we were talking uh, uh, with a uh, with the president in our private meetings, he was always uh, telling me, "Paolo, don't uh, don't push the central bank too 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 much, uh, because the central bank will never become a tech company. The central bank, the central bank will never have a tech team, uh, and that we will never master these new technologies." I think uh, that if I look back uh, ten years from 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 that time, uh, uh, the central banks, generally speaking, change a lot. The central banks are becoming more tech savvy. The central banks are changing their schemes. They are probably challenged. So these new technologies are challenging the, the role of the central banks in the economic system. So I see that we are basically uh, seeing uh, a, 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 you know, a, a challenge for the central bank that is potentially a good uh, challenge for them to, to, to cope with uh, that uh, will uh, change uh, very much the role, the role in our social economic system in the years to come. And uh, I see that there will be a, a much more, uh, you know, competition in, uh, in, uh, in more, much more currency competition than uh, what we were used to see. It's not even by, by regulation, it's basically driven by technology because, uh, you know, it, this is, is kind of inevitable. So, and you simply can, uh, you know, the regulation can simply, you know, um, try to provide some, uh, you know, some uh, some directions to a an underpinning dynamic, technolo technological dynamic that is already taking place. There is no much they can do because the technology is already is already evolving. There is no that you cannot stop the technology evolution. You simply need to deal with the dual side of technology. The dual side mean either the technology can be used for good or the technology can be used for bad. Crypto, Bitcoin at the beginning was used for uh, illegal uh, Silk Road, you mentioned before, for illegal traffic. But Bitcoin can also be used uh, for tracking, uh, you know, uh, charity donations uh, for good or for bad. Depend. The dual side of technology always exists in any technology. So the regulators can simply govern this process, but cannot stop or prevent this process to take place. So uh, I see here that uh, with the uh, increased uh, sophistication of the technology, the blurring of the technology, the growing understanding of the technology from the industry, from the community, from the regulator, from the politicians, we're going toward a, a very much tokenized economy where every things can be easily tokenized. And when we are going toward a kind of a highly tokenized economy, uh, we are going to change dramatically um, the concept of money. Uh, so we are going to escape uh, uh, what is called, uh, you know, the, the, the monetary constraints. So the need for money, because everything can become money. Everything can become liquid. Everything can be cash. And uh, if everything can be cash, what is cash? So, and what is the role of cash issue? So that's basically what I've see, I can see from not, not taking place in uh, two years, five years from now, it will take time, but the technology will ine inevitably lead us to cashless, uh, uh, type of uh, uh, world where you really uh, don't need cash because everything is cash. 
uh, and therefore um, this will uh, change dramatically the concept of cash and the and the role of the players in that in that space. Uh, 